Hi, it's Tank Girl, and this is my review of the HTC 10. Now, before you watch this review, I strongly advise you to watch my previous video, which is my first impressions and walkthrough, because I go through uh, showing you the details of the phone, the hardware, and talk about the specs in greater detail. I want to keep this video somewhat compact, so I want to go through really things like camera performance, audio performance, processor performance, and battery life, you know, and maybe talk a little bit about the software. So the HTC 10, uh, I've had it for over a week and it's been a really fantastic phone. I think HTC's back in the game. This is finally uh, putting them back on top. So first, as you know, I mentioned in my first impression, there's a 5.2 inch quad HD display. And so it's good, but it's not the best. I mean, I'm in a pretty bright room here. But uh, as you can see, uh, viewing angles could improve a little bit. It's not bad, but it's definitely, uh, you know, nothing compared to say uh, the AMOLED display on the Samsung Galaxy S7. And, you know, we kind of knew this going in, this is pretty much an IPS panel, but uh, keep that in mind. It's perfectly great uh, for, for flagship today, but it's not the best on the market. And you'll see there's a lot of things about this phone that are like that. Unlike last year's M9, which really missed the mark in some areas, this really does not miss the mark in anything. But there are a few areas where I feel that, uh, you know, they could, they could use some improvement and the display is definitely one of them. Next, uh, we have the camera. And so let's talk about this camera. This is a pretty uh, unique proposition and I'm very excited about the camera because finally we have an HTC camera that delivers that is competitive with the state of the art. It is not the best, but it is really great. So you've got a uh, f over 1.8 lens back here, 12 megapixel sensor, optical image stabilization, which is really critical. And then finally, you know, large pixels, uh, 1.55 microns, which is, you know, like on paper, the ultimate recipe for uh, a great camera. Now let's have a look at, at this camera interface. It's changed a bit this year. And uh, you know, there you have it. Um, now, walk you through real quick. You've got the flash here on, off, and auto. You can see flipping through. You've got HDR again on, off, and auto. And then uh, you can switch to the front facing camera, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. Hello, everyone. And then, uh, you know, you can switch to video recording and the shutter button here. And finally, uh, view some of your photos from before. Notice the capacitive button here, not on screen, which some like, some don't like, but that's basically how it goes. And then you have this little tray here, and this drawer has things like the Zoe camera, of course, panorama mode, pro mode, which I wanna spend a bit of time on. This is a pretty awesome, you've got a bunch of things here. You get the white balance you can set, you've got the exposure you can set, or if you'd prefer, you can set the ISO and the shutter speed, which is more my style. So I'm typically a kind of high ISO value shooter. And then here we can, you know, we can adjust the shutter speed to match, which is pretty cool. So, uh, and then finally we have the focus, right? So you can, uh, if I put my hand in the way here, you, you know, you can have really beautiful bouquet, obviously, because well, that's what this camera is all about. F over 1.8 is going to give you that. So here's a macro view. So of course you set any of these to auto again at any time. Going back to the mode here, you have an, a video mode, of course, this pure video. Let me actually show you. Uh, so it goes to widescreen like that. Of course, 4K video supported. Another thing I didn't mention in my uh, first impressions is that this supports 24-bit audio recording with three microphones and the audio quality is really impressive. Uh, you've got hyperlapse, slow motion, selfie photo, which is optimized for selfies, selfie video optimized for videos, and then of course a bunch of settings here like geotagging, grid, shutter sound, camera options that you uh, tweak a bunch of other stuff like auto smile capture, voice capture. Notice that I just received a notification and then the notification light is located right here next to the earpiece. So you can see that. Let's switch it back to photo. And I mean, this is just quickly a walkthrough of the camera interface. It is pretty quick at focusing. It has a laser autofocus right here, dual LED, dual color flash, and of course phase detect. Um, it's not bad at autofocusing, pretty quick at taking shots, uh, but it's not the fastest as you can see. This is an extremely competent camera. It's up there with the G5, the iPhone 6S Plus, 
the Galaxy S6 and the Note 5 from last year, but admittedly the Galaxy S7 has this beat with f1.7, even faster autofocus, and overall I think better low light performance. Let me walk you through, actually I'm gonna delete these real quick, and let me walk you through some of the photos I've taken with this phone. Um, as you can see, here's a beautiful HDR shot, you know, lots of detail, a little bit of that uh, typical thing you see uh, of the edges being a little odd on HDR photos. This is obviously an HDR shot. Here, here's a beautiful sunset that I took. Uh, you can't really see it uh, on the video right now, but there's a beautiful hue back here. You can see all the different shades of pink in the distance here. And lots of detail. Again, this is an HDR shot. Here's a panorama shot, lots of, of resolution, pretty awesome. This is San Francisco from the overpass at uh, 280 and Mariposa exit. So let's see, what else do I got to show you? Another HDR shot. It looks overexposed here on the video, but it's actually uh, perfectly exposed. Uh, another beautiful shot of the bay. This is an overcast HDR shot, another overcast HDR shot. Here's that beautiful uh, depth of field, and again, the gallery being optimized with swiping left and right and not for pinch to zooming is really annoying. You can see it's slightly out of focus at the edge here and then it gets in focus here. And then of course, it, you know, that beautiful bouquet you get from an F of 1.8, boom, right? Another one, beautiful bouquet here. Papa November, one of my favorite coffee shops in San Francisco, mmm, oysters. Another example of a macro shot, some HDR here. Uh, this is a fully zoomed shot, so this is still how much detail you manage to get when you zoom all the way from the ferry leaving Sausalito. And then another fully zoomed shot of San Francisco, you see Alcatraz over here, the city over there. And then there's like a, some sort of little uh, rowing boat with a bunch of people on it here. A beautiful Volkswagen a toy van, this was a toy in a window of a star shop. You can see the color reproduction is really solid. Uh, here's some low light shots of last week's mobile summit from VentureBeat and as you can see No problem recognizing this person. This is really clear. Of course, it's an action shot. The person was moving at the time Here's another shot of people sitting down uh, It's a little there's a little bit of that noise reduction artifacting you see, but it's it's generally really solid uh, and then let's see what else we have. There's a zoomed version of that. Like did, this is zoom not cropped by me after the fact. So maximum zoom in low light with motion. Uh, managed to do a pretty decent job at capturing that. And this is the first photo I ever took with the HTC 10 uh, at the Mobile Summit last week in Sausalito. So that gives you an, uh, a bit of a rundown of what the camera does and how it performs. I'm very happy with it. There's a couple of things that could be better. Shutter speed is still a bit slow. In times, it seems to want to refocus before it takes the shot, and that's just not acceptable in this day and age. You really just need that shot right away. Another area that needs improvement, let me show you, is if I tap on something, it doesn't adjust the exposure. I have to manually slide up and down with this slider and it's slow as you can see I have to like do multiple things to really get to the exposure I want really quickly. It doesn't seem to like when you tap just ex auto expose in that area and, and I'm, I like them to fix that. The other thing I like them to fix you know as I said there's a little bit too much noise reduction going on in low light. Maybe let the shutter speed slow down a little bit and up the ISO to get less noise so that at least this is in auto mode so that you can get some some more natural shots. Yeah and so the one final thing that I wanted to mention is in pro mode unfortunately you can set the shutter speed faster than two seconds and as you know I love those long exposures those star shots at night those trail exposures and I want to see at least a 30 second option on that, like the competition. Also, ISO only goes to 100. I'd like to see it go up to 50. So that's in a nutshell, my take on the camera. So the next thing I want to talk about is audio performance. HTC's always had really great audio performance on their phones. They were the first to use like a three volt headphone amp and a really high quality DAC, uh, starting with the DNA back in the day. And so this follows tradition and really, in terms of headphones performance, it's the best phone I've ever used in my entire life, bar none. The display could be slightly better and the camera is great, except not Galaxy S7 great, but the audio is absolutely beats every record and I cannot recommend this phone more for audio if you're an audio lover. So, what am I talking about? full high-res certified audio from all the ground apps. So that means we have 
24 bit, 96 kilohertz throughout. I might even be able to do more than 96 for all I know. I haven't been able to test it with anything higher than that. And uh, as I said, I mentioned the camera records 24 bit audio. Uh, it will upsample uh, other content to 24 bit. It will basically sound fantastic, great DAC. It had no problems with the headphone jack driving my Bayer Dynamic GT 990 Pro at 250 ohms, which is really impressive. So, really no complaints. Now, in terms of speaker audio, which is something I can demonstrate uh, more readily here on video, uh, hoping my camera can do a decent job, this does have what they call boom sound hi fi. And uh, Boomson Hi-Fi is using the earpiece here as a treble speaker, and there's no speaker front facing on the bottom for stereo, but there is a speaker here for bass. It's like a woofer. And so this is kind of what it sounds like. Let me find some good tunes for us to, um, to go through here. So this is about as loud as my voice. So what's differentiating this from previous HTCs is no more stereo, but the range, the frequency range is much broader. It's still not great, but it's certainly an interesting approach having two amps, probably the best sounding for taking calls, which I'm really most excited about. Uh, the Galaxy S7 has a bit less space. The G5 is sounds very tinny and kind of muffled in comparison. So. Another thing to mention is there's some really interesting functionality here in the settings. Let me show you. So you can uh, set boom sound here to different modes. Uh, and if you plug headphones in, this lets you do what they call audio personalization. You can actually create a sound profile for your current headphones that are plugged in. And it plays some test tones for you and lets you basically customize the, the frequency response to your earbuds or headphones. And it's very, very well done. Let's talk about performance. Well, you know, uh, really nothing to complain about. We're talking Snapdragon 820 here. Everything is peachy fast. I'm using, as you see, the Google Now launcher. So let's uh, change that to the default so that you can actually see what it looks like with HTC's experience on there. So we can talk a little bit about the software. You still have this um, feed thing. I can't remember what it's called now, but it's been around since the, uh, so, well, at least the M7. And, uh, you know, again, everything's super peachy fast. Snapdragon 820, four gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of built-in storage with micro SD. Again, if you wanna hear the specs and look at all the details, go to my first impression and uh, walkthrough video, which is just the one before this video. And, um, I'm happy with the performance. It's not as fast as the Mate 8, which to me is the fastest Android phone I've ever used. And I'm sure the P9 is pretty great. That Kirin chip that Huawei is making is really impressive. But you know, look, you can't go wrong with Snapdragon 820. They finally remedied all the issues they had with the 808 and the 810. No comment really. I'm not a game player. I can't tell you how it performs to play games, but I think you're gonna be hard pressed to find any issues with the performance of this phone. Similarly, battery life. So this is a 3000 milliamp hour battery and there is a USB type C connector with USB 3.1 and quick charge 3.0. Charges super fast and I've had zero issues lasting this all day. It's, you know, on par, if not slightly better than the Galaxy S7 and G5. They're all about the same because they all use the Snapdragon 820, which is very efficient. Basically, I have no problem. No complaints about battery life. You can't go wrong with battery life on this phone. It's still, you know, again, it's no Mate 8 where I can go two days of heavy use at Mobile Congress because of the 4000 milliamp and the 1080p display. But look, the reality is this is overall a much more balanced device anyway. That's it for battery life. I've talked about that. Let's talk about the software. Have you noticed there's very few HTC apps here? You can see I've got them in alphabetical order. There is no calendar from HTC. There is their mail app here and Gmail, of course. There is no uh, photo gallery. It uses uh, Google Photos. There is no music player. It uses Play Music. So HTC is really reduced sense to its bare essentials. What you have here is just this launcher. Even the settings, as you can see, look stock. 
I mean, that's that's the experience on the on the 10. It's pretty amazing. Very few apps. Um, there's one cool app they bundled. It lets you kind of monitor the performance of your battery, etc., and run in the background. Kill apps. It's called Boost Plus. It's right here. As you can see, it lets you do things like game battery booster, manage apps, clear junk, lock apps. And that app is actually available to install on other HTC phones from the Play Store. Uh, most of the features will work with most phones. And so they're supplying some interesting stuff, but very, very base, very stock. And if you go to Google Play with the, the non-launcher or say Nova, you now have an almost completely stock experience. This now feels like a Nexus or like a Moto Pure Edition or something. And that's, to me, that's really awesome. So. There you have it. So one of the things I want to talk about that I didn't talk about yet is the front-facing camera. Sorry to go back to cameras, but you know me and cameras. These two cameras are called Ultra Pixel 2 technology, which is kind of like the successor, and it combines the large pixels on the sensor with an f over 1.8 aperture and OIS. So yes, the front-facing camera does have OIS. Doesn't look like it has autofocus, and it's only five megapixels, but 1.34 microns, f over 1.8. I haven't really used it much because I'm not of a selfie person, but it's interesting to see that HTC is putting almost as much effort and energy in the front facing camera as they're in the rear camera. And so Ultra Pixels 2 this year, and, and it's delivering, you know, 12 megapixels in the back, that OIS is working, everything is peachy good there. So, you know, that's it for me in a nutshell about the HTC 10. Look, guys, the reality is this. If you want the best camera phone today, buy the Galaxy S7, okay? But, you know, I'm not as excited about the G5 this year. And the uh, uh, wide angle camera is really cool. It's really fun to play with. But if you want the most balanced, the most well put together, because this thing is just built so well. It's built better than the Galaxy S7. First of all, it doesn't have that glass back, that Calvis fingerprints. And it's like, like, listen to this. I mean, it's a, it's like a monster, it's a brick. And that fingerprint reader is instantaneous, as you saw, it's like I barely touched it, and boom, I was in. So, look, it is definitely one of the best, if not probably the best phone, in terms of all around balance that you can buy for Android this year so far. And you know, the last two years, I think, the M8 and the M9 for me were, were kind of like making me roll my eyes and shake my head. And I'm really glad to see that they put some effort into it and that they're back in the game. This is a beautiful phone. It feels so good in hand. It's so well made. It's like a combination of the A9's aesthetic and the M9's aesthetic, all rolled into one beautiful, joyful package. Go buy it. You won't regret it. I think that, uh, you know, the GS7 just obliterates everything else in the camera world this year. But music wise, this is the phone and everything else about it is really rock solid. I wanna see some camera software improvements. I really hope that uh, HTC is listening and will get us that soon. That's it for me, the HTC 10, their flagship for 2016, a great, great phone. Please subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Twitter, I'm Tankrel, T-N-K-G-R-L. Go to my blog, tankrel.com, T-N-K-G-R-L. I do a podcast. I recently had Joshua Vergara on my podcast. We talked about the G5 and the GS7. Go check it out. I'm out. Cheers, guys. Bye.